this tutorial, what we are going to look at doing is have a player follow a path and we're going to get the player then to flip around depending on which way it is facing. Okay, so uh, before we start, what I've done is I've created an enemy and this is my S enemy and you can see I've got the eyes direct, uh, pointing towards the right hand side. So what we want is when the enemy is flying along our room, it'll go down and then when it goes the other way, hopefully then we can get it to flip direction so its eyes then will look as if it's looking the other way and then when it comes back to go in that way it will flip back the other way so how do we do this well first of all what we're going to do is we're going to make a path now you don't necessarily need to do a path for this but I'm going to use a path in this example because I want to put my enemy on a path so before I start what I've done is in this room I've added an enemy layer and all I'm going to do is click, drag, and I'm going to drop this enemy in here. Next thing we need to do is add in a path. So I'm going to add in a path layer here. And you can see it's just added there, path one. So if I look at this now at the moment, I need to make a new path. So I'm just going to click on this new path. And you can see now it's made a new path for me, which is lovely. Now, this is actually called path one. So let's call this enemy path or path enemy rather. And what we're then going to do is I'm going to go back to my room and we're going to start by clicking in the center of the enemy because that's in the center point. And I'm just going to click all around up until we get to the end where I'm going to just click as close to it as I can get so that it completes a loop here. So we've got that working. Let's now program the enemy. So let's double click on O enemy. And what we're going to do is click on the add. Let's go to create. And what we're going to do is you're going to use a path. So it's this one here, star follow path. So we want to tell it which path to follow. Now, thankfully, we've only got one at the moment. So if I click on select an asset, look for object, level one enemy. And there it is. Look, it's called path enemy because that's what we called it earlier. And I'm going to give it a fairly fast speed here for just for this tutorial. When I'm done, I'm going to make it then a little bit uh, slower. So if we just press, ooh, let's just change one thing on here. So on end, what I want to do is I want to restart so it'll continuously go around. Okay, so as you can see, it's going down, around, and it's going down a little bit. And there you are, that's perfect. So I can see it is following the path. Let's just see what it does on the other side. Lovely. And there you are, it's restarted, nice and smooth, good. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do now is get it so that the eyes change uh, the other way and they look in travel in the point of direction so what we're going to do in with this one is we'll add a step event and the reason we're adding a step event is because a step event checks every second of the game so we can get it to instantly change when we need to now thankfully there's a variable which we're going to use here which is called direction and we are going to use the direction variable to basically say, well, where where are we going? Are we going to the right? Are we going to the left? Are we going up or down? Now, just before we get into this, there's something you need to know about GameMaker. When you are using this direction, anything towards the right here is known as zero. Anything going up this way is 90. Anything going this way is known as 180. And anything going this way is known as 270. Okay, so we are only worried about the right and the left. So we really only need to look at uh, 0 and 180. But if you did want to have something going up, then obviously you could look at 90 or 270. Now, let's have a little look at this. So if the direction is equal to 0, then what we're going to do is use this instance scale. And then we're going to say, well... Just keep it at one. One is obviously normal. Now, what happens if it's equal to 180? Well, we need to flip this. So what I'm going to do is add in another one here. So I'm going to say direction. If it's equal to 180, we're going to add this in here again, and then we're going to make it a minus one. Now, if we just play this, 
what you'll see is the play and I will start off look, looking towards the right. It's going down and then hopefully, there we are, it's flipped over and it's gone there. And then hopefully it'll flip back now when it goes the other way. Lovely, good. Now, one thing to uh, remember is I've set the origin of this enemy. So if I open the sprite, I've set it right to the middle. Now, what that does is it allows it to pivot directly on itself. Now, if you get a problem with it flipping, it might be because the origin is actually set into the top corner. If that is the case, um, I've purposely broken mine now so you can see what will happen. Right, so it started down a little bit, that's fine. What you'll find is it'll jump. There you are. I don't know if you just saw that. Hopefully the screen recorder picked it up. If not, you'll see it again now. It'll jump. There you are. So in order, if yours is jumping, just make sure the origin is set to be the middle center and then that will solve all the jumping problems.